fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. This is a story of one of the most mysterious characters to appear in the early days of the West. He was a fabulous individual, a man whose presence brought fear to the lawless and hope to those who wanted to make this frontier land their home. He was known as the Lone Ranger. Far from civilization, in a desolate canyon of the Southwest are the graves of a patrol of Texas Rangers, victims of an ambush laid by the infamous Cavendish Gang. One grave, however, differs strangely from the other five, for it contains no corpse. Now on the canyon walls, a desperate battle is being fought. Vince Collins, a member of the Cavendish Gang, fights two determined men whom he has just tried to betray. One is a masked man, a lone ranger, who built the empty grave to conceal the fact that he still lives. Tonto, the Lone Ranger's Indian companion. Keep it Look out! I'll get you now, Ranger. Kimosabi, but me glad. Him deserve to die. No, Tonto. No one should have his life end like this. Better him dead. Like White Parson say, this act of providence. Now no one know you still live. Yes, that is true. A strange act of providence has protected my secret. Me dig grave for him. All right. I'll get Scout ready for travel. Me ready. We go after the rest of Cavendish gang now? As soon as we can. But I've got to get a mount of some sort. We'll head off toward Wild Horse Valley. Here, take Scout. On, boy. For two days, the Lone Ranger and Tonto travel toward the remote valley of Wild Horses, where a particularly sturdy breed of horses lives. Unknown and unmolested by the hunters of the West. Later, at the entrance to this valley, the Lone Ranger and Tonto hear sounds of a furious battle. Beyond the rocks in a small glen, they catch a glimpse of a huge buffalo about to gore the life out of a fallen horse. Quickly, the Lone Ranger reaches for his gun. You hit him, Kimosabe. I hope it was soon enough, Tonto. look bad. Me shoot him? No, Tonto. I'm going to try to pull him through. Well, old fellow, you're in bad shape. A lot of bumps and bruises. Tonto, get some rags from the supplies and bring the canteen. Me do. So, in an instant, the Lone Ranger has made a momentous decision, for he has recognized the sterling qualities of the animal he has saved. For some time, the masked man in the Indian camp beside the wounded horse tending his battle hurts and caring for him as best they know how. Now human hands have done all they can to help nature in healing the animal's wounds. Me get bridle and lariat. Him run away. No, wait, Tonto. I'd like that horse more than anything in the world. But if he wants to go, he should be free. Him 
him a beauty. Like mountain with snow. Silver white. Silver. That would be a name for him. Here, Silver. Come back, big fellow. One, Silver. Come back, big fellow. Come on, Silver. Me get brighter now. Him come back. No. He wouldn't take a bit. I'll use a hackamore for the time being. Won't be as strange to his head as a bridle. There. There, Silver. You only knew how we need you. Oh. Oh, boy. Oh, 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 big fellow. Freddy. We're going to do a lot of riding together. We're going to be pals, aren't we, Silver? A few days later, after the horse has recovered his strength, the Lone Ranger tightens the saddle on the back of the white stallion. Quickly, the masked man mounts, and for the first time in his life, Silver bears weight upon his back. Soon, under expert and gentle guidance, the horse quiets and responds quickly to the Lone Ranger's lead. Later, the hackamore is exchanged for a bridle and bit. Here is no conflict between animal and master. Here, instead, is a partnership between horse and rider. The Lone Ranger and Silver accept each other as equals. He's a beauty, Tano. A dream horse if I ever rode one. Him and Scout, good friends. Yes, they'll do a lot of riding side by side. Huh. Me got everything packed. Here's saddlebag. Here, blanket. We ride after Cavendish gang now? Yes, Tano. They were headed toward Colby. Then, too, there's an old-timer there I want to see by the name of Jim Blaine. All right, let's go. until the caller leaves before we drop in. It's nice seeing you, Judge. Be seeing you next week, Jim. Look, the side of the house. Come on. Chief. Good. But he winked me. Is he out? Cold. He won't be seeing light for hours. Trade guns. Say, you're bleeding bad. Yeah, I must have hit an artery. You get on the road pronto and spread the news to the shoot and then get me a doc. I'll meet you at the Glen. All right. So someone's coming. We got to clear out of here fast. Yonder, Kimusabi. How's Jim? He's had a hard knock. Me thought maybe murders killed Jim, too. They could have, Tano. But for some reason, they wanted Jim to be found here alive. He's coming, too. Help me carry him to the porch. So that's why I'm after Cavendish, Jim. And the reason for the mask. My real identity is to be kept a secret. Known only to the three of us. 
Well, I'll be hanged. You sure got a job cut out for yourself, Reed. I mean, Lone Ranger. I'll help him any way I can. I was hoping you'd join us, Jim. Live up at our old silver mine. Oh, well, you're mighty kind to an old ex-ranger who used to nurse me, you boy. Sure would like to. Never did like living here trying to farm, only... Only what? Well, I can't run out now with the owner of the bank. Poor old Judge Knox lying dead back there. Folks might think that I did it. Why, they might start blaming me for all the rest of the killings that's going on in town. More murders, Jim. Yes, lots of them. First, it was Lem Peters. He owns a newspaper. Then Biff Anderson, postmaster and telegraph man combined. Then Max Strauss, the hotel man. And a couple others, too. Why, it seems everybody important in Colby is getting shot. The sheriff's plumb going crazy. Did you recognize the man who killed the judge? Couldn't mistake him. It was Butch Cavendish. The owl hoot you said you're after. Cavendish? He must be doing these killings in Colby for a very special reason. Yeah, but why? Most likely he wanted the murders to look like a local affair. I'm certain Jim will upset his plans if you're not around to accept the blame for the judge's death. That old silver mine of ours will be a perfect hideout for you. Yes, it would. By cranky, I guess you're right. It would be best if I became scarce around here for a bit. I'll go along with you. That's fine. How's his knee, Tonto? Leg better now. Good. Help me put Jim on Silver's back. A few hours later, after a tedious ride over winding trails and unknown paths, the Lone Ranger, Jim, and Tonto approach the site of the secret silver mine. This is it, Tonto. Where mine? Don't see it, do you, Engine? <laughs> Fooled you just like everybody else. Come on, I'll show you. Here we are, Tonto. It must have been ten years ago that my brother, old Jim here, and I discovered the mine and built this shack. Nine years ago this spring. Still no see mine. Over here, Tonto. It's under the bunk. There. Yep, one of the richest veins of silver ever found in these here parts. I never thought I'd care about digging up the ore. That is until now. Water there, too. That's the spring we were cleaning out when we found the vein. We drained the water to get to the silver ore. Jim, you and I can fix up this place while Tana goes into town for the sheriff. His name is Taylor, isn't it? Yep, old two gun is still on the job. All right, Kimo Sabi. When you find the sheriff, tell him you know where Jim Blaine is. He'll come with you. That's good. Me go now. The shack seems to be in pretty good shape. I'll be as snug as a bug. All I want out of this place is enough silver for some immediate needs. Other than that, all you can dig is yours. Oh, now I couldn't. You're entitled to it, Jim. You'll have to do all the work. You know? I could refine a little ore right here. That's just what I want you to do, Jim. Then in the future, whenever Tano and I come back here, we can get the pure metal for money and bullets. Bullets? Yes. I want some of the ore cast into silver bullets. Thunderation, what's the matter with lead bullets? They'll kill just as well as... You forget, I told you I vowed never to shoot to kill. Silver bullets will serve as sort of a symbol. Tonto suggested the idea. Symbol? Of what? A symbol which means justice by law. I want it to become known to all who see the silver bullets that I live and fight only to see the eventual defeat and the proper punishment by law of every criminal in the West. By criminy, I think you've got something there. And I'll mold you all the silver bullets you want, Ranger. But from what I know about this here country, there'll be an awful lot of silver shot up before you're through. I hope not, Jim. 
We have a lot of metal here for that purpose. If we need it. Now those dirty killers. I wish I knew where to look for them first. Now, Pete, you look up in that old creek section for Jim. Lem, go get Creel and fetch the doc's body and bring it back into town. This is a fine time for Doc Drummond to be missing. Jim Blaine disappearing. I never suspected he'd ever have anything to do with these killings. Sure. Well, go away, Indy. Can't see I'm busy? Now, Bill Keefe says that Jim's horse is still at his farm. So he must have gone off on foot. Now, he can't be very sure. hard. Me know where Jim Blaine is. Look, Indian, will you go away, please? Can't you see I'm busy with these men? What'd you say? Me know where Jim Blaine is. Him want to see you. Well, you know where he is. Why didn't you say so? Where is he? Me not tell. What do you mean by that? You just said you knew. You come. Me take you to Jim. Now, wait a minute. How do I know that you know where Jim is? You don't know, but you follow me. Jim want to talk to you about Judge Knox killing. <laughs> I bet he does, all right. Yeah, and I want to talk to him, too. Hank, you and I are a saddle up. We're going to follow this engine. No one come, only you. Now, look, you don't think I'd be silly enough to go with you alone, do you? Me think so. You brave lawman want to solve mystery. If you're right. Well, maybe he's right, huh? Uh, how long a ride is it? Not far for tough sheriff. Maybe two hours away. All right, engine, you lead the way. But don't forget, any funny business? Hank, keep an eye on things like I'm back. All right, two guns. Just a minute, stranger. Put down the gun, Sheriff. I can explain. Howdy, two guns! Jim, what the Sam Hill's going on here? Who are these people? Who's this masked man? What about Judge Knox shooting? Somebody's got a heap of explaining to do. And after the killers knocked me out and changed guns with me, my friend and his engine pal brought me here. It's a very interesting story, Jim. What's more interesting, maybe, is that you've convinced me the masked man here is fighting on the right side of the law. I'm glad you're convinced, Sheriff. So Butch Cavendish is the judge's murderer, huh? Yep. And right now, he's somewhere in this here vicinity, wounded, with my bullet in him. Wounded, huh? Say... Maybe that explains something. Old Doc Drummond's the only doc in these parts, and he's missing. Ten to one, he's been fetched to fix up Cavendish. Yeah, the problem now is, where's Cavendish hiding out? He left a trail leading away from Jim's farm. I think I might be able to follow it, Sheriff. Good, I'll get some men from town. That'll take too much time. It would be quicker for you to come with me now. Tano can ride to town. Me do, then follow your trail. All right, Injun. See my man Creel at the office. Mm. He'll get some men. Watch that late, Jim. Look here. Wagon tracks. Cavendish was followed by someone in a wagon, and a horseman riding alongside of it. Those tracks were made by Doc Drummond's rig. He's got the only narrow rims around here. So far, so good. Let's go. Oh, Doc, take it easy. Well, I'm doing the best I can. Yes. All right, get on with the bandage, and I'm in a hurry. What's the matter? Are you uh, scared of something? Like uh, maybe the uh, sheriff will find us? Why should I be? I'm getting rid of him just like I did everybody else of importance in Colby. You mean to say that you're responsible for all those murders that have happened in the last week? Sure. Might as well let you know. You see, Doc, all the men that have stepped into their vacated positions belong to my organization. Taken a lot of planning, but we're just about set. I'm taking over Colby. Well, why are you telling me this? I'm going to be needing saw bones in my organization, and I've just decided you're going to be him. Like blazes, I am. I'd die before I'd help a pack of coyotes like. What was that? Don't 
gun, Nag. I think they heard us. Somebody over there. Give me that gun. I'll cover the dock. You boys get over there and find out. Here they come. Take cover. <laughs> these men, Sheriff. I'll go help the doc. Jerry! Pike! What's going on? Answer! You go take a look. I want to find out what's happening. But don't run. I've got this on your back. Cavendish, drop that gun. All right, Sheriff. Bring in the others. You all right, Doc? Yeah, I'm all right. Who's the last man? He's on the side of the law. Well, this crook was going to take over Colby. He admitted all those murders. We know, Doc. We overheard him. Sheriff, you can take Cavendish to town in Doc's buggy. These other three will tie up and put on their horses. Doc, do you know where their mounts are? Yes, behind the rocks over yonder. Thanks. Here you are, Doc. Watch these owl hoots close while I tie them up. Yeah. I hope they do make a move, especially this one. Remember this, boys. I'm not in jail yet. Shut up. Working your mouth is making a move. Come on, Silver. <laughs> Silver. What's wrong, Silver? Those are my men. I knew they were due here about this time. So you thought you had me, Sheriff. Well, you have. <laughs> you, the sawbones, and that masked man over there behind those rocks can start counting the minute you got to live. Beginning right now. Silver. We're going to save the doc and the sheriff. 